right, I believe we are back. Welcome back to Undefined Behavior 2, everybody. Uh, my name is still Conceptionist. Sorry, I didn't change since last time. Uh, but I am running a game for you that is called Cartoon Cartoon Summer Resort. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, this is a, uh, a Flash Shockwave game that was uh, made in the year 2000. That was featured on Cartoon Network's website. Um, so, uh, I, 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 hopefully I, there are some people who are watching who have some nostalgia for this game because this game is really fun. Um, and it has, surprisingly, some speed tech for you. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit when we get a little bit closer. Uh, for now, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get started. So, time is going to start in three, two, one, go. All right. So, like I said, um, oops. Turned on sticky keys by accident there. <laughs> like I said, this is Cartoon Cartoon Summer Resort. Uh, we are playing in this level as somebody named Gus. Now, I believe the lore for this is that uh, back then in uh, the Cartoon Network days of Yonder, they had some kind of like in-between shows kind of series going on featuring all of the characters that we can play as in the four levels of this game. Um, but the uh, the lore is long since lost to me. I don't I don't fully know it. Oh, really unfortunate RNG there. So we need to collect uh, chicken from the cow and chicken show there. And if RNG is cooperative, chicken can be walking towards us. But instead, chicken was walking away from us, which uh, definitely slowed us down a little bit. But that's all right. Uh, we're gonna continue walking here, and you're gonna notice throughout the uh, run here that I'm going to be walking diagonally just as much as I can. It is ever so slightly faster to walk diagonally than it is to walk, um, you know, vertically or horizontally. Um, if you're, a, if you like me or a fan of D&D, this will make sense to you. Uh, you can, you know, you can travel uh, one and a half times uh, this amount of space walking diagonally than you can vertically or horizontally. So we're gonna grab a boat here. Uh, we and basically, if you're uh, curious about the mechanics of this game. Uh, how it functions. It's a, basically, it's an RPG, but it's a, a trading RPG. So we act as these characters and each level has a problem for us to solve. Um, and we're going to solve it by getting a specific amount of items that we need. Um, and uh, we get that by trading with other characters that are based off of Cartoon Network shows of that time. Um, and then uh, getting those items as fast as possible so we can meet the clear conditions of the level. Um, for example, this first level, it's called Pool Problems. Uh, there is a leak in the pool. Uh, basically, we have to go into the pump room, get a wrench, and we also have five holes that are leaking through the, uh, the pool's pump that we have to plug with various sticky type stuff. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to get the five quickest sticky items that we can in the game um, and get on over there. Uh, this is another key RNG sequence here, which is the uh, duck movement patterns. Please let me through. Thank you. Uh, all right, I think we can get by with this. Yep, all right, let's go. Uh, yeah, the ducks can really troll you there um, and get massively in your way, or they can just clear a wide open path. Um, but we're actually uh, gonna be done right now with the first section of the game. Uh, when we swap over to uh, the second section, uh, we're gonna be playing as a different character altogether. So here we go, plug all those holes. All right. And there we go. So now we are in level two. So uh, how this, by the way, since this is a, a flash shockwave game from the year 2000, you might be wondering how in the world am I even playing this game? Um, and luckily enough for uh, uh, for anyone who is a big fan of games at this time, uh, there is a program for us uh, that is called uh, Flashpoint. That's developed by somebody named Blue Maxima, and basically it's a flash game res uh, preservation program. We didn't they uh, they did not want all these games to just go to the wayside to be forgotten in time. So uh, they developed ways to preserve these games in uh, the Flashpoint program. So I'm playing it through that. Um, completely legal. These are all completely free games, so you know there's no there's no paying paying anything. It's not emulation. These are the games themselves with the source code itself. It's just a way for uh, them to preserve these games as opposed to them just falling off the website or having to use like Wayback Machine or something like that. Um, okay, so now we are in, as mentioned, episode two. Uh, we're playing as Longhair, who's kind of like a caveman. Uh, type person and the uh, the issue that we need to solve in uh, number two is that we are uh, 
we have a tennis uh, tennis robot that was developed by Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory that's gone haywire and starting to attack people. Um, the uh, robot has some cannons that shoot um, tennis balls naturally that we need to plug up with, you guessed it, five items. Um, so we're going to get, uh, the, again, the fastest five items that we can and make our way on over to that robot to defeat it once and for all. Um, I mentioned, I kind of alluded to this in the game itself. So like I, I keep saying getting the five quickest items and that implies that there are multiple, more than five items that are usable, which is true in, I believe every level besides the third one. Oops, there we go. Um, so there are, you know, there could be, you know, upwards of maybe even like 10 or so items. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. I've never counted, but there are multiple items that you could use to clear. And I just, I'm choosing to do the fastest ones basically. All right, so uh, we're going to make our way over here, get some money. We're going to do a transaction. And then uh, we're actually going to make our way over here to another key RNG sequence of this game, which is the uh, the crabs. So you're going to see some crabs here soon. And crabs in this game are very interesting. If you touch a crab at any point in any level, it will warp you to a random location. Now those locations are set. They're not, they're random in the sense that, um, it, you know, it could be anywhere on the map, but they're not random in the sense that, you know, uh, it depends where you go. Oh, see, there you go. There's a good example. I accidentally touched that crab there and it warped me over here. Luckily not too terribly far away. Um, so we're gonna get back here. Oh wait, no, that's where we wanna go right there. We're gonna try that again. We basically have to navigate the sea of crabs so that we do not get touched by them. They are really trolling me both sides here. Uh, luckily enough for us, if we stop, if we stop in place, they cannot hit us. All right, good. So we want to get that suit of armor and we want to hit that crab on purpose because it takes us right over to this area where the turnip is. Um, so that is that's uh, very, very good. Um, but yeah, we got we got a little bit trolled over there, unfortunately, by the crabs. A little unfortunate, but you know we're gonna get through it just fine. And we actually have all the items that we need. Uh, we have the suit of armor, which is going to enable us to get into the fight with a robot in general, uh, because otherwise, you know, we're, we would just get pegged with tennis balls, and we don't want that. So uh, we're gonna make our way on over, and then plug that robot up with our tennis ball, uh, with our blockers, which are a variety of things. It's like a wig, a turn up, anything round, basically, uh, will work just fine. And then we'll be on to episode three, which is probably the most interesting in terms of the speed run, uh, because I'm going to tease you a little bit here. We're going to be uh, we're going to be skipping it almost entirely. We're not going to be doing anything as intended, uh, which will be pretty funny. All right. So here's a tennis robot. Yeah, a log, an octopus, a wig, a pineapple, all these all these funny, funny stuff. All right. So that's. Once we get the clear screen, that's episode two down. All right, and here we are, episode three. Uh, we're playing as Vivian the cat this time. So we are going to clear, we do have to get out of here, so we do have to clear this. Now, uh, what episode three is intended to do is that the volcano is erupting on the, that's off the shore of the island there, and we have to get all the animals off the island that the volcano is on, paired up with various Cartoon Network characters uh, based off of their personalities. Um, when we do that, the animals give us a talisman, which enable us to go into the mountain and unlock a gate. There's basically five gates in our way that we need to uh, to get through the mountain to not only uh, to save the last critter, which is uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog, uh, trapped inside the volcano itself. So, uh, however, we don't need to do any of that because there is a little wall clip right there that we can clip through the wall and skip all five of the gates entirely. Uh, so we don't need to do anything. We just need to navigate this little maze, get on over to Courage, and get off this island. Um, you might also be wondering, uh, is there anything else sound effect-wise in this game besides this same tune on repeat and the bonk noise? And the answer is unfortunately no. <laughs> And last but not least, episode four, Disco Dilemma. Uh, we're playing as Prickles the Cactus. 
um what this is going to be the this is our end of summer celebration if you could if you haven't been able to tell basically we're on a summer resort uh with all these cartoon characters that uh you know they're trying to enjoy their summer vacation but all these problems keep happening um now we're at the end of summer party this disco party and we need to pair everybody up based off of who they like um and get them all to dance with each other at the end um, so we're, the thing that we're actually collecting in this game, we are going to collect some items to get us there, but the game, the, the name of the game in this level is to actually collect the characters themselves, um, then uh, bring them all over to the dance party on their own. Uh, but first, we do need to grab a couple different items. We grab uh, the ray gun of Mojo Jojo is going to swap us for like, I believe it's a blanket or something. Um, so we do need to collect a few items to get underway here. Uh, Mojo Jojo, another RNG point here, loves to get in our way. All right, there we go. Uh, we were able to navigate Mojo Jojo successfully. But uh, Buttercup can actually mess with us here a little bit too, but she didn't, thankfully. And again, we're just trying to move uh, as much diagonally as we can. As you can see, the game makes it difficult by making it so that there are not a lot of spots where we can move diagonally, but trust me, they're there. All right, we're gonna get a boat for the fourth and final time so we can get on over into the water. And get, uh, get us a few more items here. This is Og, and I never remember what show Og was in. I, mean, I know, I'm sorry. I'm probably gonna get, you know, roasted in the chat for it, but you know, I never remember. I've been told several times, I never can remember what the show is. Another crab here, by the way, just in case you thought the crab nightmare wasn't over. It sure, it sure is alive, but you know, one crab is easier to dodge than several. Um, we have all of the prerequisite items that we need to start collecting the characters themselves, so we're going to start doing that. First is courage. I, so we got courage there, and we gotta keep moving here. Then we're going to collect chicken next from Cow and Chicken. On our way, we are going to stop and grab one more item, which is going to be the lunchbox, uh, which is just behind this fountain here, which is obviously just movable, because why not? All the fountains are movable, apparently. Uh, for some reason, you can cut halfway through here and just like be walking in the bushes, which saves us a little time. And we make our way down. But yeah, uh, this game this game is super duper fun. Um, if you are a fan of this game, or if you're a fan of like a lot of Flash games from that time period off of various different websites, I highly suggest downloading Flashpoint. It's a very, very uh, fun thing uh, to do, and you get to you know experiment with all these games from your childhood. If you're in the, <laughs> at least if you're in the same age bracket as I am, uh, you'll probably remember a lot of the games that you can play on there. Uh, grabbing a quick item there. Nope. Those bonk sounds are, they, those bonk sounds, along with this looped music on Eternity, haunts my dreams a little bit. But you know what? It's worth it for the cause. All right, so that's, uh, we got IR Baboon now. So if, I, my, if I'm counting correctly, it is three out of five. Uh, we're going to be collecting all of these gentleman characters uh, and all of the uh, female characters that go along with them are going to be uh, already at the disco. So luckily we don't have to collect them as well. All right, got Ed from Ed Double D specifically from Ed and Eddie. And we have one last person to collect, which is gonna be Dexter from Dexter's Lab. And he's gonna be just on over here after this little surfing sequence. Not surfing, boating, I guess. All right, we got everything we need. We just gotta head on over to the disco. And you just gotta pair them up correctly. Luckily enough for me, it is the same every time. So I don't have to concern myself with reading uh, dialogue and trying to figure out, you know, who it is that they need to pair with. Time is coming up after this on the clear screen. All right, that is the order. Once we get the pop-up, it will be time. And time. That's it. Like, wow, man, you totally got this party started. What a perfect ending to a great vacation. And I could not agree more. Um, thank you so much for the uh, the Edge Case Collective team for having me on for these two uh, very fun runs that mean a lot to me uh, for various different reasons. Um, we don't have for CCSR here uh, specifically. We, there's not like a community me and like a, I'm the main runner of it. And there's like some people who pop in here and there to 
to run it occasionally. But uh, if you're interested in learning how to run this game specifically, or uh, probably more prevalently, learning how to actually play this game using the Flashpoint program, feel free to message me, uh, twitch.tv slash conceptionsr, conceptionsr and Discord. I'm conceptionsr everywhere, basically. So you can find me, and I will be happy to get you started. Um, yeah, just wanted to, again, shout out all the Edge Case Collective crew. Everyone's working behind the scenes doing, making this event so fun. I've been loving it last weekend, and I'm going to continue to love it this weekend as well. Um, and yeah, just yeah, thank you so much, and uh, continue to enjoy the, the rest of the event. I'll, uh, I'll see you later.